Welcome, everyone. And uh, if you guys have never seen this drummer before, I want to welcome Brandon Koo. Yes. To drum you. Got to fix your hi hat there. Yep. Yeah. Too Everyone hard. has problems with their hi hats at one point. I mm -hmm, it just mm -hmm. sucks it out. <laughs> 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 but it's good. Live. Life is uh, where everything. Exactly. That We're could go wrong, would go wrong. And it does go wrong. <laughs> but there's something to learn from here. When something goes wrong, don't stop. You just can't. play. Exactly. Because you're the drummer. And I'm so excited to have you out, Brandon. Yes. Um, and, and, and for all you guys who might not know, Jared and I went to Singapore just this last summer, so a few months ago. Um, uh, thanks, a huge thanks to Benny Lin for that mm -hmm. and the Singapore Drum Shop uh, bringing us out there. It was great. Um, but during our time there, we ran into uh, Brandon and we got to know you pretty well. We yeah. went and saw you play um, one of your cover gigs. Yes. And you're an amazing drummer. Uh, but what I like about um, you is you've been doing this for more than 15 years. Yes. And you've been playing three to five nights mm -hmm. a week. Um, you're just what I like to call a real working drummer, someone who's out there grinding, he's just, mm -hmm. just playing all the time. You have so much experience and mm -hmm. so much knowledge, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we brought you to Drum Meal. So thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Yeah. And uh, for those who um, were wondering what that first song was, I love the title. What, what do you call this song? It's called Sailor Twift. Sailor Twift. Sailor Twift. That's cool. Where can they find that song? Uh, it's uh, by a good friend of mine who is based in Los Angeles, LA. His name is Raz Azrai. Mm -hmm. R A Z A Z R A A I. Right. Right. So his Instagram uh, handle, R A Z A Z R A A I Music. Yeah, go check him out. He doesn't make it easy, hey? Doesn't make it easy. <laughs> and if you guys want to follow Brandon, you can find him online. It's at Brandon underscore Koo. Brandon underscore Koo. That's K-H-O-O. -O. Twitter, Instagram. Same. Works. Twitter is uh, Brandon underscore Koo. Instagram, Brandon underscore Koo. Facebook, just Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-K-H-O-O, -O, Brandon Koo. Very cool. And you're the first Singaporean drummer we've had on Drumio. And honored to be here. Yeah, very Thank cool. Thank you. And a huge thanks to Mapex, Aquarian, TRX Symbols, Sky... Sky Gel. Gel. Those are cool. This thing here, Sky Gel. Mm. Right, right, right. And of course, Vader Sticks as well. Yes. Um, so we got a cool lesson for you guys. And um, download the sheet music if you want. The sheet music isn't the main takeaway. This is all about being musical. And one thing yes. that, you, that you talked a lot about when we were in Singapore was you like to play music, not yes. drums. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Exactly. Um, to me, I play music more than drums. I use drums to interpret what I feel to support the music that I'm, uh, uh, I'm playing. Right. Right. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of times I, I find that uh, uh, a lot of people, when they get into the music, they get into the drums and then they just go all over the place. Drummers understand rhythm, mm -hmm. but that does not necessarily mean guitarists, bassists, or vocalists or keyboardists totally understand the rhythmic aspect of uh, drumming. Right. So what may be normal for us uh, would not be really normal for them. You know, like your uh, uh, um, odd time meters and you playing different sets of uh, uh, groupings, fives and threes and, and all that, it might throw them off. So uh, where we excel in that area, um, certain uh, groups of musicians may not. Playing on right. instruments, yeah. Well, also the audience too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, of course, times they of don't, course. They don't get it. Yeah. And um, we do so many lessons mm -hmm. where we show the coolest fills, linear chops, gospel the, chops, the double coolest, bass. K H O O L. Coolest. Oh man, <laughs> you're, you're, you're totally speaking the drumio, the drumio tongue now. Yes. Um, but we do a lot of lessons on flashy stuff. So this yeah. is not so much flashy, but no. this is musical. Fills that you know might not even think are fills, yeah. But I love it, so I'll let you take it away, man. Go for it. Well, uh, fills. When you think about fills, drummers may just go. <laughs> Sorry, or the usual when they go to. <laughs> right. The usual fills. The usual fills, yeah. you know, um, the flam tabs and the paradiddles and all right. that. But what I want to talk about today is being minimalistic in your approach, meaning subtle changes on the bass drum, mm. on the snare, on the hi-hat, that could give tension. Like for example, uh, we should look at the first example. Sure, yeah, sort of. Um, uh, so the, what happens here is the bass drum is pushed one eighth note later, okay? So it, was, it would go like this. Oh, one. Wow. 
very simple. Just, just think of this beat. The second bass drum. One. That's the first example. The second example. So that's a fill. That's a fill. That right. itself is a fill. <laughs> so it's that subtle change, hmm. right? And then the second example will be adding 60 notes in it, right? That give it tension, okay? So again, a one. Okay, one, two, three, four. Hmm. Okay? okay, the third example, what you're having here is the, also the 60 note, okay? A one, two. Okay? Okay. Now the fourth example, okay, what you're doing is you're pushing the snare one eighth note later, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, one. Right, so a lot of these, does it matter what the beat that you're playing beforehand? Uh, the beat, you play basically everything, uh, what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna play a song. Okay. Okay, and then within the song itself, okay, you have 32, 32 bars. First eight bars will be the verse. The next eight bars will be the chorus, and the next eight bars will be the verse, and the next eight bars will be the chorus. So we'll play all these four examples hmm. within that song. Let's hear. Right? All right. Okay. The first four examples. The first four in examples this in this musical. All right. Okay. So you have all these four fill-ins in one example. And they're so one subtle. song, yeah. subtle, but what you do is you're, you're keep, uh, basically keeping it serving, serving the song and making the fill-ins at the end of each uh, uh, sequence uh, dictate what's going to happen. Is like okay, this is this is the this is the part where you get ready for the chorus. Right. After the chorus, this is the part where you get ready for the verse. Right. And after that, this is the part where you get ready for the chorus again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you find a lot of drummers, um, they tend to just overplay, or they, they think too much of a fill, or they try to do a full bar fill every time? Like, what's the, what's the problem you see? Um, well, a lot of drummers, what they tend to do is they tend to think more for themselves rather than the music. Now, if I were to play uh, the music, for example, if I were to play it this way, um, I would be serving more of myself rather than...
I totally know what you mean, but I do want to say you're, you're playing to an audience of drummers, so a lot of drummers might think that's cool. Well, that's cool. But Correct. it doesn't serve the song, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't serve the song. What basically it does is it just uh, uh, serves yourself. I feel good playing that, to be honest with you. Right. right. When I do that, I feel, yes, yeah. I nailed it. No, I did that. You know, but, but what happens after that if the singer might be singing the last phrase of the, the chorus or the verse and she or he will go like, uh, what's, what's happening? You're stepping on my toes, yeah. yeah. Go, stepping into her space or his space, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. Let's go through some other examples. Yeah. Okay, so the next example, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's start with five. So what's, what's happening here is you're adding a 60 note on a hi-hat. So now we're working with variations on the hi-hat, okay? So on five, what you see here, okay? A one. Now, can you play maybe like maybe play it in a four bar phrase? Okay. And then play it one bar afterwards so we can get the feel of the lift into whatever it is, a chorus. Or okay. Whatever. So I'll be a I'll play a four bar. On the fourth bar, I'll play the fill in and we go to two Perfect. bars of the chorus. Yeah. Okay. A one, two, three. Right? So that sort of gives that uh, uh, signal that here's the chorus, mm. you know? It also is subtle, but it gives that uh, idea that something is changing. Right. Right. And cool. the next one, same thing, but what, what's happening is we're adding the 16th note uh, also on the second beat. And then you're opening the hats at the end too? I'll yep, love it. on okay. opening the hats, okay? Oh, what? Right? Again, two, three, four. Cool. Yeah. And then what's happening on example number seven is on the last count of the beat, we're just adding 360th note. Again, one. Okay, well, I'll do the same thing, play four bars on the fourth bar, I'll play the fill. Cool. One, two, three, four. Super right? Super subtle. And then yeah. on example eight, what we're having is we're having 60 note triplets. Right? Okay, again. Oh, one. So, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. In the same song. All right. Right. Let's hear it. Okay? All right. Yep. And there we have the next four examples. And we have left two examples. Okay. Nine and 10. Yep. Okay, on the nine and 10, we'll, what we're gonna do is on the third beat, we'll add the open hi-hat on, uh, uh, on the three end. Mm -hmm. Okay? Again, a one.
and we leave that rest on the floor. That adds space. That adds space. Right. Okay. And number 10, what's going to happen on the one N and on two N? We accent the hi-hat and then we do the same thing as we did on nine. We leave the, on the three N, we have the open hi-hat. On the four, we strike the snare and then we rest on the four. Let's hear it. Okay. So for the benefit of this on the chorus, I will not go to the right. I will stick all to the hi-hat. Okay. Okay. So we'll repeat nine and 10 again. So nine fill-in would be for the verse, 10 fill-in would be for the choruses. Okay, play number 10 for us first before we go to the music. Right. Okay, I'll break down number 10 again. I'll just do number 10, the fill-in. Oh, one, two, three, four. Again, one, So nice. that gives a bit of a variation to go into the chorus or the verse. Or Let's the next part of the context, song. Yeah. So we have all that happening. Uh, the whole idea is you don't just work with uh, what's happening here. Think of something that will um, strike your creative fancy, but at the same time, uh, not throwing the other instrumentalists off. Mm. Work from the bottom up. So when you work, uh, you have the foundation of that groove, You keep the bass and the snare going, uh, have different variations in the hi-hat, maybe drop an eighth note, push it further, an eighth note. It, it will work wonders. You do that, the whole band will love you. Well, there's a reason why you've been working 15 years, yes. three nights a week, three to five nights three a week. Three to five nights a week, yes. It's crazy. So, musical, you say, drum fills that make you sound musical. Mm. Do you think that, um, by servicing the sound is, is what makes it musical or is it just the subtleties like? Mm, I think it's the subtle uh, fill-ins that you do, the subtle approach that you do. Then again, uh, I like to say that based on the genre of music you're playing, you should serve the music. I mm -hmm. mean, if you are playing metal music, pull out all your metal chops. If, mm -hmm. you're, if you're playing country music, pull your country chops. If you're playing uh, jazz, pull off your jazz chops. Uh, pop, I would prefer to just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it straight, keep it simple, have subtle fillings. You can never, can do no wrong. Right. Right. I know a lot of drummers might think, oh, this is easy. And mm. this is the easy stuff. But it's funny because I see a lot of drummers, they, they get to this stage and they play all these crazy chops. Mm. And then as they get uh, more experienced, I guess you would say, their fills become a lot simpler. Mm. And, um, uh, but they sound better. They sound more musical. Yeah, yeah. They, like you said, they, they seem to fit fit the song. Yes, yes, better. yes, yes. So, what advice can you give beginner drummers who are struggling through this kind of stuff? For this feelings, seriously, you don't have to think too much into it. Whatever you learn, if you are a beginner drummer, most probably you have done that. What? That. 
try that feeling on the hi-hat instead of just a snare. Hmm. Right? Oh. Maybe even the right cymbal bell. You know, uh, or if you're doing that 60 note, do that. Exercise number seven. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep the bass drum and the snare constant, whatever you do on top, you can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as long as you keep it within, don't repeatedly do it again and again and on every count. Right, right. You know, that, right. that, that should be fine. And you know, it's funny, you hear a lot of music mm -hmm. that have these fills. A mm -hmm. lot of times you don't think of them as a fill. You just love the transition. Mm -hmm. You love the song. It's produced very yep. well. Yep. But there's no real standout fill, but there's still fills in there. Is that kind of where, you're, where these come from? Yeah, I mean, I hear uh, a lot of drummers, um, when they play, they keep it really simple. The experienced, the drummers, they keep it really simple because... You know, you don't need more than just that if you're playing rock or pop music, mm -hmm. you know. You don't need anything too crazy, too far out. Right. You know, like I said, uh, uh, I think the older one gets, the lesser they will want to do on drums. And, and um, the lesser cymbals or maybe the lesser toms you have. Right. Um, um, I sometimes work with just bass drum, snare drum and a hi-hat. Hmm. And a floor tom, that's all. Right. You know, and sometimes if I, if I want to go into uh, something that sounds like, I go. And then the first floor tom hit, I play it softer. Instead of going, I go. You know, sometimes working with different, uh, uh, lesser toms can work wonders. You work on your dynamics. Right. You know, if you're going, uh, For that, you go instead of start your, you start with your right, now you start with your left. You also work your left side. I'm sure you've been in many situations where you've been put on kits that aren't your setup or have less yes, than you're used to. Definitely. So you've had to be very creative. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, not only kits, I think stools. There oh, were, yeah, I there bet. Were, there was one kit where I. Uh, when, I, where, when I had where the drum stool basically had no support. Mm -hmm. So it was just that. When I sat down, I was going like this. Mm -hmm. Bad for the back. So I had to get uh, uh, literally stools. So to put on there and I was, the snare was like this high and I had to go like, okay, this, this, is, this is all I can, I can do right now. But we'll make it work. We make it work. Always do, right? right? Yep. Do you want to play us a song? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next song is uh, uh, by a ba uh, my band, my new band called uh, Cohen. Um, Instagram official underscore Cohen, Cohen with a C O E N. Okay, Facebook you can find us on official Cohen without the underscore. So uh, Instagram, Twitter, official underscore Cohen. Uh, Facebook page, official Cohen, C O E N. Right. Okay. And what is the song called? Freedom. Freedom. Yep. All right, let's hear it.
Thank you. It, That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you got some dream theater influence in there. Yeah, lots of dream theater influence. Right. I, I grew up uh, loving dream theater. You and me both, man. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I noticed you also have a crack in your China too. That happened on your flight. Yes, on my flight. That's not good. Yes, but uh, it's okay. It happens. Um, uh, but uh, that's how that's how durable. Oh, sorry. That's how good TRX is. Even they still sound good when that's yeah. cracked. Yeah. Still sounds awesome. Love it. Right. And the last thing that people were pointing out when you were playing that is your Halloween beaters. Go to the foot cam. Oh and yes. Check out your your skull beaters. Yes. That can see that. Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. So what it, it looks like is two little skulls head banging all the way. Yeah, they're really getting into yeah. it. Love it, man. <laughs> all right, we have a couple questions here. Um, yep. And then I'll get you to play us one more song and we'll wrap everything up. But uh, here's one from Sammy. He asks, uh, do you prefer to hold a straight beat through the whole verse or do you always say, or throw, say, a simple crash every four bars to break it up? It's a good question. A good question. Yeah, there's, there's something about um, this crash thing that gets to me sometimes uh, when I play a song and I go, a one, two, three, four, a one. To the drummer himself, mm. it's like, yes, that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. When I listen back to that approach, and I go like, oh my God, there's so much crash going on in there. Can you chill back on the crash, Brendan? Mm -hmm. You know, what I would prefer to do is crash after every eight bars. And again, it's really just preference, yeah. what you would prefer to do. But what I would prefer to do is crash after every eight bars, unless, the music calls for you to crash after every four bars or two bars, mm -hmm. depending on uh, the accent. Uh, but um, most of the time, when I see drummers crashing after every four bars or even two bars, it gets to me when it's not necessary. Right. Again, I, I would like to have a disclaimer. This is not to say that crashing after every two bars is wrong or af uh, after every one bar is wrong. It's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, and something that I have observed through the years of listening to records and said, wait a minute, there's no crashes because I play in a cover band also. Mm -hmm. So when I listen to uh, the music and I go like, wait a minute, there's no crash here, there's no crash here. Why am I putting crashes there when right. it's not needed? So it sounds I, like a safety net for us. Yeah. Put a crash in it might hide some things. Or, yeah. yeah, might hide some things or, or sometimes it might be due to habit. You know, mm -hmm. learning drums, your drum teacher goes, okay, after every four bars crash, so you think it's the right thing to do. But actually, uh, you don't need to have so much crash. It's, just, it's there to add colors. Right. But it's not there to be used every time. The more you use it, the less impactful it is. Correct. Right. Right, yep. And you also said, uh, that's a good point, like a lot of times your instructor will say, hey, crash every four bars. We'll yep. also say, play a one bar fill. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these fills that you have notated on here, they're not yeah. even a they're half a bar, half quarter a bar. bar, if you, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so, um, uh, uh, well, most of the time you look at what you have, if you use everything in one bar mm -hmm. or two sequences or two, two cycles, you don't have anything to, to heighten up the bridge or the solo, you know, so you need to just chill back a bit for the verse, go to the chorus, build it up from there. You know, it's like, it's like storytelling. You don't, you don't tell the story and quickly get to the climax of the story. You mm -hmm. tell it and you build suspense and all, and then you bring it up when you come to the, to the impact, full part of the story, you give that big bang and everybody goes, <gasps> okay, you right. know? So I, I, I think, I feel that uh, uh, playing the drums is like telling a story. Right. You know, yeah. So use whatever you want to use, but just remember that you have one whole song to complete. Mm -hmm. So you know, ration up the toms or the bells or whatever you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep your feels musical. Yes, keep your yeah. feels musical. Um, 
By the way, you have Singapore fans watching. Shia? Yes, Shia. Here. What's up, Shia? Uh, What's up, Shia? Good to see you out. We met in uh, Singapore as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. Keeping the Singapore drum shop uh, down <laughs> over there. <laughs> I know Benny's probably out doing something or other. Yeah. Uh, here's a um, uh, last question we'll go through here. This is from Gil the Thrill, or Jill the Thrill, one of the two. Right. It says, uh, in film number eight, what hand are you using to hit the snare before the roll on the hi-hat? Is it the left or right? Now, is eight the, uh, eight's the, okay, so eight's the 16 note triplets. Right. So if you're getting your hi-hat in on the snare, I would just skip the last hi-hat. Well, I like to have the... Well, sometimes I would yeah. do... You can, you can actually also have the open hi-hat on the plut. Okay, so it sounds like... So you have that, what's happening there? Yeah. Right. Or you, or, or you might even want to squeeze in the bell. You know, to give a bit of color. Mm -hmm. So I like, to, I like to think that everything else here is like your, you know, your, your color palettes. You can use whatever you want to use. So you can use this as a... Yeah, so, so to answer, I think I'm drifting away. <laughs> but the answer to that question is, yeah, I try to... Again, it's about pulse when I go... And this is only possible with the free stroke on the molar. There you go, mm -hmm. Gil the Thrill. Hopefully that answers your question. That's yep. a tough one to do, to sneak that little extra high in there. Uh, <laughs> yes. Especially when you start going faster. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. So do you want to wrap everything up? Last thoughts, anything else to add? To um, well, anything, uh, yeah, but basically we were, talk, we were talking about musicality. Um, try to uh, think of drums or music in general as being an, an artist. So when you're an artist, for example, let's take splash painting, where they take paint and just splash it on the wall. Mm -hmm. So if I, if, if I were to do uh, a splash painting and I ask, Dave, do exactly what I do, mm -hmm. it's impossible. Right. It's really impossible. So I have drummers, uh, as my students or, or, or other younger generation drummers coming up to me and go, and they have this low self-esteem, like, oh, uh, I can't play as good as you, I can't play as good as him, I can't play, you know, I don't think I'm that good. So when they tell me that, I, I, I look at them and I say, wait, stop, stop there, stop right there, stop saying that he's better than you or, or you're not as good as him because what he can do, you may not do, but you, know, you may not be able to do, but mm -hmm. what you can do, he may not be able to, able to do it. Right. So uh, look at your drumming, as, uh, uh, as an art, you know, this. Played by maybe even you or anybody else will sound absolutely different. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how you might want to replicate it, it would right. sound so different. So don't, compare yourself as uh, 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 someone who is not as good as drummer A, you know, or don't, don't put down yourself. Because I think in this uh, industry in itself, in drums, whether it be drums, guitar, bass, keyboard, or vocals, everybody has this, <sighs> he is better than me, I'm better than him. And I think we have, we have enough of that already. Couldn't right? agree more. Yeah, we have there, enough man. of that already. Yeah. And um, Drumio is an excellent platform to showcase the positivity behind drumming and how you share things, mm -hmm. you know, and how to keep things on the positive side. Uh, it's, it's not that you're, you're, you're better than me, or I'm not, it's not that I'm better than you, it's just the way it is. What, uh -huh. you know, what you can offer and what I can offer. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So keep keep that low self-esteem down because it's that one thing that will hold you back massively. Very cool. Yep. yep. 
wise words. Yes. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming all the way to Singa from Singapore. My pleasure. To Abbotsford. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Toronto used to be my favorite city. Now it's Abbotsford. Now it's Abbotsford. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I love Singapore too. I'll definitely be going back there. Mm -hmm. And for all you guys watching, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. Again, take what's the, the concept behind this, more so than just the 10 fills, you mm -hmm. know, leaving space, just changing the beat up, displacing something. Um, the subtle fills, you know, and I also challenge you guys to listen to music too, more intentively like you did. Where are mm -hmm. the crashes? Where are those fills? What are those fills? Because a lot of times you'll hear, especially in pop music, they're very, very simple. Yes. And if you want to be drumming for 15 years and make your band happy and just get <laughs> gig all the time, um, <laughs> these are great ideas to, to keep in mind. Um, we are going to be filming a course exclusively for Edge members, yes. which is going to be on actually a really cool topic, evening out odd time. Odd time, yes. You're an odd time wizard, so it's going to be really <laughs> cool to see that. And uh, you're going to close us out with a song as well that's going to be offered for Edge members to download as a play along. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, set the song up. What's it called? It's called Polygonia. Polygonia. It's also uh, uh, the other song from our debut album from my new Cohen. Right. My new band Cohen. Right. Uh, so yeah, do follow the Instagram page and, and the Facebook page official Cohen, Instagram official underscore Cohen, Twitter underscore Cohen for updates. Uh, we'll be releasing uh, the album ne early next year, January, February, everything. When I get back to Singapore, it's, it's on to productions and all that. So yeah, it's back to back schedule. Cool. Yep. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably released by now, so go and check it out. <laughs> and uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube and you're not a member of Drum yet, what are you waiting for? We have like probably, I don't know, 50 times as much content inside mm -hmm. of Drum Edge than we do on our YouTube channel, and that's not a joke, and our best stuff is inside of Drum U Edge. So hopefully we'll see you there. Mm -hmm. Brandon, thank you so much again. Thank you. All right. Right. I'm going to leave so I can watch from the other side of the room. Okay. Play us out, man. Bye-bye.